Hey guys, this is gonna be a video about my CNC6040. I had it for about a year now. When I first got it, I got the table by itself. I got the Stepper Motors NEMA 23 with the Gecko G540 as a package. I got a 2.2 kilowatts spindle and a Chinese BFD and a UC100. I'm gonna show you some of the problems I had and how I fixed them. Okay, first problem I had with it was the cables. The cable coming from the G540 to the stepper motors was getting hot because the resistance they required for it was at the end of the plug. Plus, this wire is actually only 28 gauge and the one I replaced is now 18 gauge. The problem that I had with the BFD cable was that the first cable I put was in shield and because the Chinese BFD creates a lot of noise it used to make Mark 3 going to east of requested. Now I actually put a shield cable I grounded to the to the base and I grounded to the BFD to get it Mac 3 out of emergency mode when the charge pump on the Gecko G540 was on. If you go into your general configurations you will see an option all the way to your right called use watchdogs. If that's not clicked while the charge pump on the Gecko G540 will still stay on, on the default position. Once you click it, it will go into the power position with the emergency stop released. Another thing is when connecting your spindle to the BFD, make sure it's running on the right direction either clockwise or counterclockwise depending on your bits. If not, switch two wires from your spindle and it should run the other way. This is what can happen when you're doing when you're cutting or when you're just rubbing. Some of the things I have done to my CNC table was to add this vacuum table to help me secure materials without putting any screws or double side tape or clamps. The other thing I did was to add a dust shoe to it to keep the dust to a minimum and with the vacuum it yeah, actually almost no dust. Let's talk about the vacuum table. It's actually a piece of three quarters MDF plus a quarter plywood. It has quarter inch holes one inch apart on the X axis and one inch apart on the Y axis. Even though the vacuum table is great for holding down my materials, but sometimes when I need to cut little pieces, it's actually not that great. I'm gonna show you a couple of ways I hold down my my materials with a couple things I made. This is a piece of plexiglass with one inch stubs I mean a quarter inch stubs one inch apart that way I can it can actually fit into the same holes that the vacuum table has I put my material this way right there I have another one in a form of a wedge with the same pins 
we can put it right here. And the wedge. That way, my material don't go nowhere. It's secure. But sometimes I need to cut the edges. So this way might not be as good either. Other things I use to hold down my materials could be double side tape or carpet tape. I use, sometimes I use quarter inch dowels that they actually fit into my backing table the same way that way when I when I design the pieces I need to cut I can actually make four holes on each corner and that way I can actually secure the material without the, the size if I have to. I made this little wedge style plant but I don't really use them that often. And of course sometimes I use the screws. Okay, let's do a test to see how the packing table actually works and some of the macros I use. First, I'm gonna own the CNC machine. <laughs> I'm gonna use this to find the corner of my material. The other end just have a, an alligator clip. I'm gonna place it in the corner of my material. The other the clip into my touch plate. I'm gonna grab a regular bit. I'm gonna place it my spindle. I'm gonna move my machine to get it to the middle of the circle. And I'm gonna go to my offsets right here in the middle where I have the macro to find my corner Sometimes I like to do it twice just to make sure that it's actually in the corner. zero my X and my Y. I'm going 
gonna load a G code to show you how the backend table actually actually works and see some of the tool changes I have to macro too. telling me to put tool number gonna zero out the bait. I'm gonna turn the vacuum to turn the vacuum table on. Now that I'm ready, I'm gonna hit start. Telling me now to change the bit to a different bit. Number three.
and that's what it just cut with three different bits in one single G code. I want to thank you guys for watching. If you want me to make another video about something you saw on this one, or you want me to explain how something works, leave a comment and I'll try to make it. Always like or subscribe if you want to see more videos.